What's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you how you can survive on Uber bosses when you run into trouble or normal bosses, whatever it may be, by utilizing this trick for spamming your life potions or I mean it's probably better if I just showcase it and how it actually looks like in person because this is kind of crazy and it does allow you to do stuff that you normally would not be able to get away from. So say you're just leaping around the fight and you get yourself kind of out of position. You notice he's doing a beam attack. Like say you're far away from the boss and then you hear that he's doing the the attack. Wait, he can do the attack, right? Oh, so he's doing the attack. Like, wow, I died. Okay, so I'm not gonna cut that out because stuff happens when you record it. It's always nice to show the failures. All right, so let's go see right here. So I didn't have to reduce effective shock. So let's actually do this again. Oh, so he's doing the count. What? Okay, he literally just one shot at me. This guy is a beast. So sometimes it doesn't work, right? No, it will work. I just. Oh, wait, let's go. Oh, man. What is going on? This trick ain't too good. Or is it? Is it really bad? Or is it just me misplaying? So let's go try it again. Oh, when is he gonna do his ability? Yeah. Bam! Uh, something is going on. I don't really know why, but this is a tragedy. What is going on? Uh, sometimes the lightning roll is kind of high. So let's see. If we... I can't do this just oh, dead again. So what exactly is going on? What do you think is going on? What's wrong with my trick? Why is it not working out? Well, I can tell you why. We don't have fortify up. Oh, look at that. That's exactly how you do it. So no fortify up, that's why it happens. So let's see. Oh, but you can see here, if you had the shock effect, will we die? Well, let's try it. Oh no, I just wasted a full set. What even happened? All right, let's do another one. But this trick is absolutely game changing. And it's been used in the gauntlet a bunch. And people have abused this. So what we can do here is we can craft on reduced effective shock, but we actually don't have that. So that's actually kind of hard to do. But basically the reason we're dying is because we are getting shocked by the boss. But I just wanted to showcase it a little bit. It's a little bit fun to see what exactly happens when you get completely owned. So right here, let's go inspect out some damage nodes. Cause I don't really know how to get reduced effective shock at the moment. So we're just going to do this right here, which is Oh, right, that's some bad pathing. All right, see, it's not too bad. So let's get a chance to avoid. Oh wait, this is reduced effect of shock. Well, that ain't gonna work. But let's go just show it again. I mean, I'm sure we we won't die, right? So easy game, right? Oh, got him. Easy, right? So why does this actually happen? So the reason why this can happen is because we can spam our flash as many times as we want and we can preemptively adjust. Easy, right? So whenever you get out of position, you just spam your flash and you'll be fine. You don't need to worry about the die beam anymore. The die beam is in fact your bitch. You can't die to the die beam. Alright, well that's gonna be enough of a showcase. But this, this trick is one of the most OP bossing tricks you could ever Imagine, now a lot of people might be wondering why do so many people SSF Hardcore end up bossing with three or four life flasks? And this is right here, Ben, the best player in PoE, and he's practicing for Uber Cyrus, and you notice he actually has three life flasks. Now these three life flasks are a Seeding Divine life flask, a Seeding Hollow life flask, and a Seeding Divine life flask. So why is he using so many Seeding life flasks? So when I was trying to do the Ubers on my Bone Shatter character, I pretty much ran three life flasks for almost every fight because they are absolutely invaluable when things get rough. If you saw it in my video, it, I was saved countless times. Well, sometimes. But a lot of times I was saved just by spamming the life flasks away and sometimes you're just out of position or you kind of want to just maximize your damage. Now what exactly do you want to roll on these life flasks? Well, you want your life flasks to have only one prefix mod and no suffix mod. So, Having no suffix mod means that you can spam the life flask without having it being used. Now the prefix mod we want to use is seeding. Now the reason behind this is it grants amount 66% reduced amount recover, instant recovery. Now 
The trick with this is that we are unable to use this because our life is full. So we can preemptively spam the flask before we take damage. And as soon as any tick of damage comes in, we're able to instantly pot ourselves up to full. Now, if we use a flask of a suffix on it, say I put this here, you can see it's actually getting used. But if we use one without a suffix and only the prefix, we can spam it as many times as we want and it will never use the charges. Now, this is a bit of a problem if you're running Blood Rage because Blood Rage will make it so your life is not full and it will consume the charges. Now, that's just something that is how it's going to be. So let's see here. So you'll see it consumes the charges right there. But basically, if you use bubbling, it will still use the charges because it's trying to give you the 50% recovery that you will get from using a bubbling life flash. So only seeding will work. Now, you can also use the harvest benchcraft to gain extra charges. I did do that earlier. So I used it on this one. You can see it has plus 87 the maximum charges. It's kind of expensive, but if you really want to do a fight, it is absolutely invaluable. It will give you 10 charges, which is pretty much 10k HP. And if you have three of those flasks, that's 30k extra HP on your disposal at any time. Now, you might be wondering, how exactly do you sustain these flash charges? Well, there's three different ways. One is the flash mastery that you can use. It's life flash gain one charge every three seconds. Then there's also the minor pantheon that ma makes it so you gain three charges every three seconds if you haven't used a life recently, a life flash recently. And there's also this node right here, which if you path by mage bane, is not too bad to take. Profane chemistry, life flash gain one charge every three seconds. So what this means is that your life charges, you could potentially get up to five charges every three seconds. So that means when you're doing the boss fight, for instance, and you end up spamming all your flasks, you will notice that you'll get the flask back over time. So by the time we tap back in, you'll see that most of the flash charges will probably be full. Now, this is extremely important because there's a lot of downtime on a lot of boss fights. There's a lot of intermissions. So when we come back to the fight, you'll see that the, fight, the charges will be actually getting refilled. And you can see right here, it's already going back up slowly. Now, how do we actually take advantage of this? Now, there's a lot of different ways to take advantage of this. And as you can see here in the earlier example, what I did was that we can end up doing this to tank the Maven Cyrus Die Beam. We can use this to tank the Maven Cascade of Pain. We can use this to spam when we're running into a lot of meteors on the Syrian Exarch Ball Phase, for instance. If we're using Arctic Armor, for instance, right? This makes it so we take less damage when we're standing still. So a lot of times sort of ball phase where you're in really deep shit, you can just spam your life flask and stand still and you'll get the Arctic Armor portion of it. And then you'll also be able to take a lot of damage and you'll immediately be able to pop back up whatever you take. And if you do take the flask mastery that removes a random elemental ailment when you use a Mana flask, well that one won't work. So you have to random non-elemental ailment. I guess you cannot remove any sort of shock or ignite. So you would have to use a mana flask, which actually does not work for us. But a lot of these times, these hits are something that's done in multi multiple successions. As you can see here from the Parish Die Beam, for instance, you will see that it's not exactly one hit and it's actually a lot of multiple hits. So let's go showcase it one more time in all of its glory and why this is actually kind of important. Now this fight is incredibly hard. Oh shit, I'm dead. Oh, got him, right? Now my HP is incredibly low on this build, so that's why it kind of looks bad. See, easy. You can just tank it all, as long as you make sure you have whatever layers of defense you have. So this character requires a fortify, so you want to make sure you have fortify. And the sense this is lightning damage is a little bit different. Because lightning damage has a pretty high range. So obviously my character has too low life to survive a really high roll. But for a lot of multi-hit stuff, you can definitely take advantage of this and survive. Now, final thoughts. This allows you to have near infinite EHP while you have flash charges up as long as you do not get one shot in. And it's pretty much only limited by how fast your fingers are. If your fingers are super, super fast and your character doesn't actually get one hit by the damage, then you're going to have infinite EHP. You're going to be able to be regenerating your HP as long as you do not get one-shotted. So as long as you're not one-shotted, you will be perfectly fine. This also makes it so it's a lot more chill when bossing because you don't need to worry about dodging that one ability or doing the ball phase like that. And it's also great for piano practice. If you're an aspiring musician or pianist, 
Doing this can allow you to get a lot faster fingers. It might even help you out with trading. And in general, also, I want to bring up a lot of people kind of miss under or not misunderstand, but undervalue how important utility flasks are. Utility flasks are completely game changing. For instance, let me find a Ruby flask I was actually using. If you use a Ruby flask with increased effect on the enkindling orb, you can see right here. If you actually get one with, okay, if I ever, oh, so if you get 64% increased effect, you could almost take 40% less damage when you're doing the Siri Exarch ball phase. And uh, you could also gain back utility charges right here, gain one flash charge every three seconds. So every single Siri Exarch ball phase, you would have to charge up. When I was doing Uber Uber Elder, for instance, or Uber Uber Shaper, when you have those uh, blue balls or purple balls you need to dodge, you can see right here, I use this flask, and by the time the next phase comes up, you'll always have this flask up. But when you always have this flask up, you will see that's a huge, huge survivability increase. So this is my character I was playing for Uber Uber Elder. And you can see here, the cold max hits 49,926. If you remove that, it's 33,450. So when you turn on this flask, it's a 50% increase in your maximum hit. So that's actually very, very, very good. So overall, I hope this has helped you out and gave you a little bit of a laugh. Obviously, I was going to die if I didn't, if I got shocked, right? So it is an extremely game-changing, and I think it honestly deserves to be nerfed or changed in some way because it actually trivializes a lot of boss fights, especially if your character is tankier and doesn't get one shot. It is a complete game-changer. So running a flash setup like this, it might seem troll at first, but it's actually the right move to do in a lot of fights, especially with how bad DGNs are for many of the hardest uber boss fights. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalted orbs, and divines than me. And see you next time. Bye! Damn.